family, kingdom family, kingdom family, what's up? What's up, everybody? I'm so excited to be here with you today, live. This is the Kingdom Spiritual Church for everyone. You know, one of the things that I always believed, I grew up in church, but sometimes felt like I didn't belong because of some of my alternative beliefs or curiosities about things in the world. And so this is a place where all beliefs are welcome, all biologies are welcome. We believe wisdom can come from many places and with our differences, we know that we rise together. And I have a very, very special session for you today, all about the power of clarity, calm, and joy. And to teach us and walk us through this session, I'm gonna have a special guest coming in just a little bit. Dr. Shauna Shapiro, who I will formally introduce you to soon, is a great friend of mine. We're so lucky. She has a brand new book out that we get to talk about together that has actually changed my life. I had the power to read both of her books, and I'm so excited to uh, introduce all of you to it today and this incredible work. So, The Kingdom. For those of you who are here, I just want to make sure y'all can hear me, you can see me. Hello, 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 good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Hi, Emily, hi, Sabine, hi, Cheryl, Devin, Maggie, Kalani. Yes, good morning, everybody. Thomas, I see you. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So as we begin our session today, I want to make sure that we do a couple things. First of all, that you know in the kingdom, anytime you hear me say anything or anybody else say anything that makes you want to say like, yes, or amen, or I'm with you, or I got you, y'all know what to do. You just put the number one in the chat box a whole bunch of times like this. And that's kind of like us throwing up our prayer hands, throwing up our claps, our snaps, to really exchange energy because you're not watching a TV show here. We're here live together all over the world. Look at all of you here from all over the world. Sandy, Mary Teresa, Raylene, Elka, literally from countries around the world. Kathy, hello, Kathy. And so we put our ones up. And this would be the moment where I would say, kingdom family, make some noise, and you would put your ones, and I could see that is working. Okay, cool. I see you. Hey, Jackie, Alonzo, Sarah. And then finally, if this is your first time coming to the kingdom, if this is your first time here with us, I want you to type the words first time into the chat box, and you will see our family, our kingdom family will welcome you with open arms and an open heart. And I would love for you all to actually type in where you're coming in from today. I see Boston, <clears throat> amazing. The UK, Indiana, Los Angeles, Texas, Killeen, Texas, London, United Kingdom. Yes, we're all here. Oh, shoot. I just, okay, cool. Are we still good? Yes, we are live. All right. So, <clears throat> And I see lots of first timers here. Hello, Sarah. Welcome. Hello, hello. All right, awesome. So you'll see our first timers, family. Welcome them because they're now a part of this family from Minneapolis to San Diego to London to Eugene, Oregon, from Madison, Wisconsin, all over the world. Clara, Jacksonville, Florida, Keola, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, I could welcome you all day, but. We're gonna get started with our session today. And one of the things that I want you to know, especially because we have some first timers here, and I won't do this every single time, is we begin all of our sessions with some form of art to call us into our hearts. And so we begin sometimes with a poem, always music, some song, and then I'll have a moment of prayer where I will kind of channel through a prayer, but then I'll give you about 60 seconds of silence so that you can welcome in your own personal prayer whether that's a religious prayer or just a personal intention that you're setting for yourself. And I have a vision of all of us being together soon in person where we can all be saying our prayers in all of our different languages and all of our different traditions out loud at the same time. It'll be really beautiful. And then we have a teaching, a practice, a golden nugget, and our power action for the week. And our special guest, Shauna Shapiro, will be leading us and we'll be having discussion through our teaching and practice and golden nugget today. And before we begin, just a couple quick announcements. One of the things that we started with season two of The Kingdom that I think many of you will love and enjoy and appreciate is we have soul study. So The Kingdom is every other Sunday in season two. It's every other Sunday. 
And we also, on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday night, we are having soul study. It's completely free. It's a deep dive into the lessons of the kingdom that we take a small clip of the kingdom and then members of our community come together to talk about and give actions on how you can deepen these lessons and practices in your own life. And so for the next two weeks, we're gonna be focusing on everything that we're learning today until we go into the next session. Can I put some ones in the chat box for those of you who've been coming to Soul Study? The last two weeks have been amazing, amazing, amazing. And uh, our leader, Trey, from our community, has been leading them. So if you wanna join Soul Study, I'm putting the link in the chat box. It's totally free. You get to come, you get to talk with community with your video on and meet these people from all over the world. And it's just justinmichaelwilliams.com slash soul study. And then finally, the Kingdom Choir. So many of you have already signed up. We'll be in touch with you soon. We're getting all the logistics and everything together for our first song. We are launching the Kingdom Choir. And so this is gonna be a virtual choir and we're gonna be putting out music out on Spotify, out in the world, original songs for this community. We just brought in a choir director. We're getting all the technology set up and we're gonna be starting very, very soon. And so if you want to join the Kingdom Choir, it's for everybody. The I can't singers, as the Brothers Corn say, the shower singers, the car singers, the all, I always wanted to singers. I love singing singers. If you wanna join the Kingdom Choir, I put a link to the Google form here. If you're watching the replay, I'll make sure that everything is in the description or the chat box uh, as well, or if you're listening to the podcast. And then finally, um, our team is looking for a communications director. And I know some of you have already submitted applications. We're still reviewing those and accepting more. The communications director helps to get the word out and the information and needs to have really incredible writing skills along with marketing digital products skills and understanding the how to write for marketing not just how to write well and so our communications director role if you're interested in that you can write to us at hello at justinmichaelwilliams.com that's hello at justinmichaelwilliams.com with your resume and a little bit about you and we'll be getting back to those in a few weeks so <clears throat> without further ado with all these announcements let us begin with our song and the song that I've been singing while we're waiting for the choir is the song that I know you all know <laughs> because we've been singing it for a long time called I Am Enough. And I think it's actually the perfect song for our session today with understanding how to dive in as we'll be doing with Dr. Shapiro with clarity, calm, and joy. And I think you'll be surprised when you hear the lesson of how we do that in our lives. But one of those things is understanding and knowing that we are enough. And so, <clears throat> I, oh, you know what? I forgot, y'all. I wanted to read this poem to you first from this woman named Jennifer Bloom. She gave me this card. And I'm going to read you this poem, and then I'll, we'll go into I Am Enough. It's called Morning Cup. And this was really useful for me. She sent it to me on purpose on this beautiful card. So here's Morning Cup by Jennifer Bloom. Do you fill your cup with coffee or fill it with tea? With all your mental anguish or possibility? Do you pour it out for others, leaving nothing left for you? Steeped in good intentions, the result, a bitter brew. Me, I fill my cup in nature, with laughter and good friends, by making time for myself and a present mindful lens. If my cup is filled to brimming and teeters on the brink, there's so much more I have to share as I offer you a drink. So I thought this was a really beautiful poem of how we fill ourselves up. We really fill ourselves up and how she says here, you know, do I pour it out for others, leaving nothing left for myself? And if even though that's steeped in good intentions, the result is a bitter brew. And so we fill our cup this is what we're doing here in the kingdom and what you're going to be learning today with Dr. Shapiro as we dive into the power of clarity, calm, and joy. All right, so y'all going to sing with me. I am enough. I'm putting the lyrics up on the screen. 
and I hope you all will sing along as this is a prayer to yourself, to the child in you. Little boy, don't cry. You've been in pain enough. Come, little girl, don't fight. You're finally safe enough. No, one day I'll look into your eyes, show you you don't need to hide behind the sky. Don't be afraid, you're born to fly I'm by the side Come on I am enough, hey I am golden, baby, yeah. I am enough I am enough I am enough Oh, I am golden, baby there. You've taken the blame. Enough. No. Little boy, don't hide. You've been ashamed. Enough. One day I'll look into your eyes. Show you you don't need to hide behind the skies. Your wings, you're terrified. Don't be afraid, you're born to fly. I'm by your side. Here we go. Come on, I am enough. Hey. I am golden, baby. together we rise together we rise together and I'm so grateful to have all of you here today for the kingdom let us pray so here at the kingdom we just place our hands over the center of our chest one over the other you can drop your gaze or close your eyes God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you. Thank you for bringing our community together from all over the world. Thank you for our guest, Dr. Shauna Shapiro, who's here to share her wisdom with us today. 
May every word that is spoken today help us remember the truth of who it is that we really are. That no matter what is going on in our lives or inside of our being, emotionally or mentally, that we have the power within us to know that we are enough, that we can fill our own cups. And in the moments that we can't, may we remember to ask for support and help and rely on this beloved community and the community around the world. May we remember our power and our strength in this moment and feel the joy and the gratitude of this community coming together. I'll give you all now about 60 seconds of silence to welcome in your own prayer or intention. God, Spirit, Universe, all that is, all that ever has been, and all that ever will be, we thank you by every name you go by. May every word that is spoken today come right into our hearts. May we support each other and lift each other up in this moment. And may we be able to take everything that we need from today to step into action to change our lives and help change the world. Make this place a little bit better. So it is. We thank you. Ashe, Aho, Salam, Amen, Shalom, Awen, Satnam, Om. Thank you. And may these practices help us leave this earth a whole lot better than we found it. <laughs> you know, maybe more than a little better than we found it. All right, everybody, <clears throat> it is time, it is time, it is time, and I am so excited. I, it is with great, great joy that I start this session <clears throat> on the power of clarity, calm, and joy. And we are going to be welcoming to the Kingdom family today, and I want you to give a massive warm welcome to Dr. Shauna Shapiro. So Dr. Shauna Shapiro is a clinical psychologist and internationally recognized speaker and teacher and leader. Her TEDx talk has been viewed more than 2.5 million times. I don't know if y'all hear me when I'm saying that. 2.5 million times her talk on mindfulness and self-compassion. She has spoken and been called, summoned to speak for the King of Thailand. She's been featured by the Wall Street Journal, Huffington Post, Yoga Journal, I mean, literally every publication you can think of, every company you can think of. But what I feel most special about is that I get to call her a friend and a colleague and a collaborator. And she's been on Dr. Oz and the American Psychologist and, and, and we have her with us today. And it is such a massive gift to have Dr. Shauna Shapiro with us. She has written two books, <clears throat> the first book, being Good Morning, I Love You, the original book that came out just a couple years ago called For Mindfulness, Self-Compassion Practices to Rewire Your Brain for Calm, Clarity, and Joy. And just recently, about two weeks ago, she had a guided journal, the Good Morning, I Love You guided journal for calm, clarity, and joy come out into the world. And it is incredible. I've had the chance to read both of these amazing books and we're going to talk to you all about them today. And so without further ado, I welcome, welcome, welcome you, Dr. Shauna Shapiro. Hello. Thanks. Please have you announce me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it everywhere. Oh, that sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, dear? I'm excited to be here. That was such a beautiful prayer and opening song. Oh, well, thank you. I'm so grateful to have you here, and I just am so excited to dive in. But I have to start 
with one thing in Kingdom Family. The whole Kingdom Family is welcoming you here. Alonzo is actually here. And he says, her book was so good. So we have somebody here who's already been reading your book. Um, and, and what I want to start with is, I think one of the first questions that a lot of us have is the title of the book, Good Morning, I Love You. Can you talk to me about that and where that comes from and, and what it means? Yeah, um, it's interesting. I, I, I brought this because I wanted to show you both or show you all. So the, the, the original book is Todd, Good Morning, I Love You. And when my publishers, when I told them that was the t I wanted the title to be, they said, you know, that's a terrible title. Uh, you're a professor, you're a scientist. That's going to make the whole book seem kind of hokey. You have to title it something else. And I explained to them why that title was so important. So I want to share with you the story behind it. But before I do, I want to show you this book, Rewire Your Mind. Let's see, how do I hold it for so this book is the exact same book, but in the UK, apparently, Good Morning, I Love You didn't translate into British. <laughs> I'm teasing, it's all tongue in cheek. Um, but they, they titled my book, Rewire Your Mind. So if anyone is buying it for someone who maybe wants more of a scientific approach, it's word for word, the exact same book, just different title. That's hilarious. Um, so in the UK, it's called Rewire Your Mind. In the US, it's called Good Morning, I Love You, but the exact same book. There we go. Isn't that funny? Yeah. I know. Um, so, so for me, this is one of the most powerful practices I've ever learned and really changed my life. Um, when I was going through a pretty difficult divorce about 10 years ago, I would wake up every morning with this kind of pit of fear and, and really shame in my stomach that I hadn't been able to make it work. You know, I was a clinical psychologist, a meditator, and still um, we were ending. And I remember my teacher saying, you know, you're practicing a lot of shame and self-judgment. Why don't you practice some kindness? Um, I want you to say, I love you, Shauna, every day. And I was like, no way. <laughs> it just felt so contrived and inauthentic. So she saw my hesitation and she said, why don't you just say good morning, Shauna? When you wake up, put your hand on your heart. It releases oxytocin. It's good for you. She, she kind of, the science would win me over. And so the next morning I took a breath, put my hand on my heart and said, good morning, Shauna. And it was kind of nice, right? Instead of this avalanche of shame and judgment and fear, I just greeted myself with kindness. And as I continued to practice each morning, um, I started noticing subtle shifts, a flash of kindness here, a little less judgment there. And um, a few months later, it was my birthday, and I went to one of my and Justin's favorite places on the planet, which is Esalen. Yep. <laughs> it really is. And it was my birthday, and I was completely alone. My, my son was with his father, and it was my first birthday probably in my life that I was completely alone. And I went down to these mineral hot springs right over the ocean, and the sun was rising, and I put my hand on my heart to do my good morning Shauna practice. And all of a sudden, this, this image of my grandmother, my Nana, came to me. And she had passed a few years before. And I kind of felt her love just pour through me. And before I knew it, I said, good morning. I love you, Shauna. Happy birthday. And it was as if the dam around my heart burst. And this love came pouring in from my grandmother, from my mother, and also my own self-love. And, you know, I wish I could tell you every day since then has been this kind of bubble of self-love and I've never had self-judgment or doubt again. And that's not true. But what is true is this, this pathway of kindness and compassion toward myself. I, I felt it. It was, it was real. And I've been practicing ever since. And so the book is really titled after this practice to really honor something that completely shifted my entire life. Mm, this is so powerful. And you know what I love? I could tell everybody because you talk about it in the book is, you know, Shauna, when she'll send a text message or an email to <laughs> me or to, to people all over, she says, good morning, I love you. And it's just so great. It's so, you know, to feel that practice. And, you know, I can understand, Shauna, like that, that feeling. I think a lot of people can relate to trying to do these practices where you're telling yourself, I love you or I this when you can feel mm -hmm. the complete opposite inside sometimes and i think it's important for you know somebody who looks like you who's a professor who's this who's sharing with people that in that moment you didn't feel that way at all no no very far from it and and i think it 
wasn't the first time I had felt self-judgment either. It wasn't just because I was getting a divorce. What, what I realized is I had grown up with a lot of shame and a lot of self-judgment. And I think all of us have, you know, as a clinical psychologist working with many, many different people from, you know, veterans to women with breast cancer to high level executives, what has been so interesting is even these people who are from very different walks of life, they all talk about this shame, this self-judgment, this I'm not good enough, I'm not doing it right. And it was interesting. So I started studying shame. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not the only one here. Like, <laughs> what's going on? And what's so fascinating about shame is that we think mistakenly that it's going to help us be a better person or improve. Maybe it'll help us exercise more, or eat healthier, or be kinder, or more patient parent. And it turns out that shame never works. It literally can't work. That it shuts down the learning centers of your brain. And so it keeps you stuck. Whenever you make a mistake and then you shame yourself, you literally freeze yourself in that behavior. Mm, this is so important. So the shaming actually kind of acts as this reinforcement, this yeah. freezing, and then we get stuck in that place and we can't learn and grow. You know, one of the things that you say, uh, my favorite quote from you, I quote you all over the place in this when I'm talking about mindfulness, is what you practice grows stronger. It's so one of my favorite quotes from you, and you talk about it in detail in the book. Can you explain what that means to me, especially in this context? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'll, I'll just kind of back up a little bit. So this, this statement, what you practice grows stronger is not mine. I actually stole it from a monk in, in um, Thailand. I was on a retreat there and I was really struggling to practice in the right way, which in my mind was my mind shouldn't wander off so much. And I was getting so mad and frustrated with myself. Like, what's wrong with you? You're a fake. Cause my mind just kept wandering off. And so luckily I had an interview with this monk and he said, oh dear, you're not practicing mindfulness. You're practicing judgment and impatience and frustration. And then he said, what you practice grows stronger. He said, meditation isn't just about attention and focus. It's about our attitude, this attitude of kindness. And that if I'm practicing judgment, I'm growing pathways of judgment. And what's so fascinating about this is, you know, that was back 20 some years ago before I studied neuroscience and neuroplasticity, but he was exactly right on that. The foundation of neuroplasticity is what you practice grows stronger, that our repeated thoughts, behaviors, emotions, they shape our brain. And so part of mindfulness in this practice has to be learning to shape our brain in a kind way, in a compassionate way. And this doesn't mean, and I want to make really, really clear, because you pointed it out, Justin, it doesn't mean we fake it. It doesn't mean that we're like, everything's okay and I'm happy. Um, your nervous system and your brain are not stupid. <laughs> you can't lie to yourself. So we're not faking love or faking happiness. What we're doing is we're setting a really deep, pure intention. I would like to be kinder to myself. I would like to strengthen this pathway of self-love. I'm planting the seed and that's authentic. You know, this word self-compassion is, I think, thrown around quite a bit. And mm -hmm. I'd love to get some clarity from you on exactly what it means. Like, what does it mean to have self-compassion and to practice self-compassion? Yeah, so, so kindness and self-compassion are different. And I want to explain a little bit. Kindness is just this attitude, like open, curious, kind self-compassion arises when you're actually in pain so what's interesting is the first step of self-compassion is mindfulness you have to know you're in pain before you can soothe your pain and i think a lot of us step over that we we don't even acknowledge we're in pain so the first step of self-compassion is just saying sweetheart you're scared or you're lonely whatever it is just naming it and what's interesting about naming it is what the research shows is when we name an emotion, it actually calms down our physiology. It's called name it to tame it. It was a famous study at UCLA. So that's the first step. The second step of self-compassion is the obvious one. You bring kindness to it. You soothe yourself. I often will put my hand on my heart because first it does release oxytocin, which is the hormone of kind of safety and soothing and love. So it, it physiologically calms me down, but two, it's just a very comforting gesture. And then the third part of self-compassion, which I think is really fascinating, and this is really um, building on Kristen Neff's work, 
is this idea of common humanity, this recognition that I'm not the only one who's in pain. And not in a way to kind of say, oh, well, you shouldn't feel bad because there's starving people in the world. It's not like that. It's I'm not the only one who feels lonely right now. And you think of all the other people in the world who might feel lonely and you send your compassion out to them and then you bring it back to yourself. And all of a sudden you're part of community, this kind of common humanity. And so self-compassion is these kind of three key steps. And it's a practice you can do in any moment. You don't have to sit down and meditate just in any moment that something hard is happening. Mm, this is so powerful. And what's the difference between kindness and compassion? Is there a difference between these two things? So compassion needs there to be suffering for it to arise, right? Kindness, you can be kind, you know, in, in any given moment. The, the one that I think is really fascinating is the difference between empathy and compassion. Ah. So I'll tell people a little bit about that. So I'm a clinical psychologist and I train therapists. So I'm a professor in graduate school. And so I'm training all these people who are going to go out and be in the front lines and hear about a lot of trauma. And so a lot of my students ask me, well, what do I do when I'm with someone in pain? Because, you know, our mirror neurons light up. And when we empathize with someone, our pain centers light up, right? You see someone stub their toe and you're like, ooh, ow. Like, and you just feel it, you get it. That, that's part of being human, it's, it's healthy and good. But if you see it over and over again, you're gonna burn out because these pain centers keep lighting up. What's so extraordinary is this is research done, I think it was about three years ago at University of Switzerland. They found that when you put people in brain scans and they feel empathy, the pain centers light up. When they feel compassion, the positive centers of the brain light up, the kind of neural circuits of joy light up, which is so fascinating. So empathy means you feel someone's pain. Compassion means you, you have this desire to help. You care about their pain. And this desire to help is actually a protective suit for you. It actually bathes you in a lot of healthy chemicals instead of kind of burdening you um, as empathy. So the key when you're with someone who's suffering is to shift from empathy to compassion and the same with yourself when you shift with compassion to yourself you're actually shifting your neurochemistry mm -mm, this is amazing and i think it's a lot of people talk about empathy and being more empathic and i'm empathic i'm an empath and so now we can everybody can take that <clears throat> take that off <laughs> and <laughs> and try to practice more compassion because the compassion circuits, then we're not activating the pain centers inside of our own selves. And we're able to then show up, instead of taking on someone's pain, we're able to show up in service of their pain. Exactly, and it's challenging. And so I wanna acknowledge that. And it's not that empathy is wrong or bad. It's just, it's a gateway to compassion. You can't get stuck in empathy. And so you drop beneath the empathy, the pain, and you feel your love, you feel your caring. And, and that changes everything. This, and I feel like this is a really powerful practice even just for ourselves, right? So like noticing that we're in pain, right? And then, because we can think about it, how easy it is, or to, it's easier to imagine it for another person, but noticing we're in pain and then using that as the gateway, like you're saying, to then show our own selves compassion. And yet it's very hard, just like you said, it's easier to send compassion to someone else than ourselves. And so one of the, I don't like the word hack, but one of the, the tools that I use is I imagine if my friend was lonely or afraid, what would I say to her? How would I comfort her? How would I hug her? I'd say, oh, sweetheart, I'm here. I'm with you. And then I try to bring that same kindness to myself. And what I'll tell you is it doesn't work if you try to imagine what your friend would say to you. <laughs> Because then you're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They're just being nice. They're my friend. You actually have to imagine what would I say to my friend who I love? And then your whole consciousness shifts. Wow. So that's a, it's a really, you know, some of the most powerful tools can be so simple. So it's just imagining you have somebody else that you love going through the same thing you're going through, same thing you're dealing with, and then ask yourself, what would you say to them? And yeah. writing this down. And this is why I think your journal is so powerful. Shauna, mm. because you have these, you know, when we read it inside of your first book, it's so incredible because we hear the studies and we learn and we hear the tools. But in the guided journal, I don't know if you can just open it really quick and just show people. I'm going to, um, yeah, if you can just open this beautiful book, I'm going to solo out Shauna on the screen so you can um, see 
her more clearly. Give me one second. There, there we go. go. Now, okay, now you got the full screen. Oh, there we go. So, so I'm trying to show you all. What's beautiful about it actually is um, it's morning and evening practices. And I want to explain why that's so important. I'll just show you a little. And then you have these beautiful moons. You know, waning we've been around <laughs> I'm not very good at marketing, but um, what I will say, this th a couple things that you said. One is the reason I wrote the journal is because so many people were reading the book and then sending me a note saying, well, now what? Like all oh, this is such good information, but how do I change from empathy to compassion? How do I do, how do I practice self-compassion? And so as a scientist, you know, I study how people change and how people change is through practice. Yeah. It's not through reading. No. And so I wrote this journal to really give people these science-based practices that you can do in five minutes a day that really will help re-architect the structure of our brain. Um, and the reason I did morning and evening, just to give you the reason the sun and the moon, I'm not overly creative or artistic, but I am a scientist. <laughs> and I read some amazing research that came out of UCSF a few, just about two years ago, it's pretty new research, that found that your mood in the morning and your mood in the evening are the best physiological predictors of aging and health. They predict the length, yeah, it's amazing. They predict the length of your telomeres, which are these little caps at the end of the DNA that kind of slow aging. They predict the health of your mito mitochondria, which is the body's energy battery. So this is really interesting. We need to protect these times and it maps on perfectly to all the perennial wisdom traditions that say to meditate in the morning and in the evening. And so I created these practices to be done first thing in the morning and in the evening to kind of help people instead of being on their smartphones or other worrying about their day to actually give them a practice to anchor them. Yeah. And it was, it was fascinating because, you know, people always ask me, when should I meditate? And before I used to say, whenever you can, <laughs> just fit it in somewhere. And now there's some science to say it's probably helpful to do it in the morning and the evening if that's possible. Yeah, this is amazing. And then doing these actual practices. And I love one of the things that I want to pull out that you said that I love about this journal is they're just five minutes, five minute, easy practice. It's not like you're sitting down even for 20 minutes or 15 minutes. They're just simple things to start rewiring your brain. And people are gagging over this thing. They said, you don't, you don't change through reading, you change through practice, right? And so this is really, really important. And, and I will say, I, it is five minutes a day, so I don't wanna mislead you, but once a week, I invite people into what I call a deep dive. And then I give them a little bit of science and a special practice to do that could extend longer. So for example, a forgiveness practice or a practice on self-compassion or a joy exercise to cultivate joy. And so the idea is you can kind of have these little short daily things, but if you have time over a weekend or one evening and you want to take a little bit longer, that there's these weekly dives. Oh, this is great. And we are going today, just to give you the teaser, we're going to have the opportunity to do a little bit of a longer practice with Dr. Shapiro um, a little bit later in this session today. Well, uh, Dr. Shapiro is going to guide us through this practice. So I want to just recap for people and I love they're all typing this into the chat box, Mary, Teresa and Sandy, and everybody's typing them in, uh, is number one is name the pain, acknowledge it, the name it to tame it. Number two is bring kindness to the pain, noticing that it's there. And number three is recognizing that you're not alone in feeling the feeling and then sending the compassion and bringing it back to yourself. Did we get that right? Yes? Perfect. <clears throat> Absolutely perfect. You're such a good student. Perfect. Yes. Then we have great students here. They're learning. And so, you know, one of the things that you talk about in the in your book and that we explore inside of the journal is this idea that our emotions are messengers. Can you talk to me a little bit about what that means? I think this is such an important concept. Yeah. So so a lot of times people think emotions are are good or bad, right? We want happy emotions are good and anger, fear, sadness are bad, but they're actually just messengers and they're giving us information. And what's really fascinating about emotions is they only last 30 to 90 seconds. So emotions rise up, they give us their message, right? Like a smoke alarm, and then they pass away. And so the key is to feel them, not repress them or block them, but also not indulge in them, not kind of tell the story of like, oh, she did this, he did that. So we feel them rise up like a wave and then they pass and they kind of have given us their message. 
And then we need to know how do I respond when I see things clearly, how do I respond? And you know, one of the things that's really important about this that I, I've learned and learning that idea that emotions come up in 90 seconds and pass away. I was like, wait, how is that true? Because when I'm feeling something, I'm feeling it like (laughs) way more than 90 seconds. And then learning this idea that it's because you're just replaying the story in your head again, again, and again, and again. And so the 90 seconds is going to end and you are just keeping the script running and running and running and running. Right. Exactly. Right. So it's like a car. Like if you don't give it gasoline, it's not going to drive. And so if you don't give the thoughts, right, the emotion, these thoughts, these stories, it's it's not going to keep going. Yeah. Now, I want to be clear, they rise and pass again. It's not like 90 seconds and it's over. Right. We, we've all felt like waves of anxiety, but it's really, you know, especially when I'm working with patients, for them to witness that wave rise and pass and know they're still OK, like, oh, I'm still here. I'm, I'm actually OK. It's incredibly liberating. Then you're not afraid of your emotions. You're able to just be with them. Yeah. And what's a tool? What, what people are saying here in the chat box, my mom is actually here. And my mom is saying, she goes, it gets hard not to indulge. Like, yeah. so what are some of the, the techniques or tools or ideas you have for people in that moment? Yes. So the first tool is just knowledge. So just knowing that when I tell myself this story, it creates this consequence, just knowing that. And so sometimes for me, when I start repeating the story, I'll, I'll pretend it's like a hot coal that's going to burn me. And I'll just say, no, like, you know, if it, if it was one of my children and they were reaching for the fire, I would say, no, that will burn you. So there's, there's a certain amount of discipline. And again, self-compassion is not just that you become this like, you know, indulgent couch potato. It's, there's a discipline because you care about yourself. So you take care of yourself. So the first step is to to be disciplined with with the stories. The second step, and this is very helpful, is to feel the emotion in your body, to find the signature. Like every emotion has a signature. And so, you know, for me, when I get um, sad, like my throat contracts and I get heat in my face, or when I get anxious, my stomach gets, you know, butterflies in it. Or when I get angry, I get like flushed in my face. Like I start to get to know these patterns And when you're witnessing the pattern, you're a little bit removed from it. And so it doesn't take you over as much. Yes. Yes. This is, this is so good. And I love, I mean, there are, when I tell y'all see how many practical nuggets are here in the book, in both books, and especially the guided journal. What I love about this guided journal, Shauna, is that you get to then see, it's like you're writing your own book of your own life using these prompts all the way through so you can see how it will apply in your life. And in Soul Study, we're actually gonna be using on our Wednesday nights, we're gonna be using some prompts from the journal to deep dive into our Soul Study for the next couple of weeks. So it's gonna be so fascinating. You know, I wanna ask you um, something that I've never actually, in all the times that we talk, you know, I've never actually asked you this, which is wild. Why did you choose, because I know this is not on accident, the words calm, clarity and joy like how Mm -hmm. does this lead us there and why are those the words that you think come from these practices Mm, no one's asked me that that's so interesting oh wow yeah so and, and and it's actually really intentional so we talk a lot about mindfulness and compassion and i think often we move into kind of realms of suffering yeah and so the reason i included joy and it's very much a part of both the book and the journal is we have a negativity bias. We tend to focus on what's wrong and what's negative and evolutionarily that was really important. That's how we survived, but we need to balance it. And there are beautiful practices that cultivate joy, that cultivate gratitude, that cultivate connection and community. And so I think it's important to use these practices of our mind and our body to do that. So that's the joy part. The, the calm and clarity, for me, the reason mindfulness is the foundation of all the practices and why I always start with that is the word mindfulness means to see clearly. And for us to know how to meet each moment, whether or not it needs compassion or it needs joy or it needs gratitude, we have to be able to see it clearly. And mindfulness provides this incredible thing where you're both alert, like awake, seeing clearly, but you're also calm and at ease that physiologically the body's at rest, but the mind is like laser-like and clear. 
And most people haven't experienced that. They're like, wait, when I'm super laser, like my body's stressed and I'm on, or when I'm relaxed, I fall asleep. And so we're learning this new state of consciousness where we're awake and alert, yet calm and at ease. Mm, And this is, for me, that is, I've I've never heard anybody quite put it that way, Shauna. That was really powerful because that for me, now as you're saying it, that is really where the power of practicing meditation and mindfulness comes from because you get to get your your self, your physiology in this state that's just totally ideal and then you know what choices to make, you know what actions to take, you know what to say in the moment and what not to say, you know how to keep yourself in that state when there could be triggers coming up and how to respond in a way yes. that is intentional and taking you in the right direction. So this is, um, I'm so glad I asked you. I can't believe nobody's asked you that question. I'm so glad you did too. And I, and I think I need to, you know, I, what you just said, the most important thing for me about mindfulness is what you just said, is that it puts you back in choice that you're not automatically reacting. And if there was like one thing that I could teach all of our children and everyone in the world, it was how, it's how to take that mindful pause, yeah. right? Between the, the trigger or the stimulus and the response to, to put us back in choice, to give us more degrees of freedom so that all of a sudden, just like you said, all these little choices, they add up. And if our compass isn't in the right, isn't clear, then we end up going in the wrong direction. Yeah. And you know, one of the core elements of mindfulness is your intention, which I love that you started there. And intention is really, it's aspirational, it's psychological, it's spiritual. It's also neurochemical. When you set an intention, you release dopamine. And what that does is it kind of spotlights the brain and it says, this is important, pay attention. And then dopamine turns into epinephrine and adrenaline, which heightens your focus and attention. And so all of a sudden, whatever you set your intention to is getting your resources and you're moving kind of your compass is set in the right direction. Yes, this is the science. I love the science behind it all. It just makes me so excited. And because this community, we know we talk about these things, right? But you can see that this is not just, woo woo, you know. <laughs> that my intention, you know, like it actually really works. You know, Shauna, I want to have a moment to practice with you. Um, You're such an incredible leader and teacher. And I love how mindfulness, like how you brought this really landed in the space of how mindfulness actually is what gives us the choice in these moments, even with just ourselves to notice, oop, I'm about to go there and then have the ability to free ourselves. So there's one of my favorite practices in your book is this uh, wiser self, highest self practice. And I just thought for our community today, it would be a really powerful practice for us to go through. So would you lead us through that practice? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'll stay here on the screen and just be the proxy and I'll just practice with everyone. Beautiful, so I love when we all get to practice together as Justin's been emphasizing, that's why I wrote this journal, is it's really only through practice that we can transform. And there's something very powerful about practicing in community. So I feel really grateful. So first, just take a moment and you can let your eyes close or you can just look down. You wanna start to bring your attention inward. And first, just let everything we've been talking about kind of settle and land in the body, right? Give yourself time to digest and receive these nutrients. And feeling your breath and let the breath kind of bring you deeper into the body. With each exhale, kind of feeling a little bit more here, a little bit more grounded. And just relax the body 5% more. So we're practicing that calm, that softening, and at the same time, heighten your attention, your clarity. And then setting your intention for this practice to really listen to this highest voice, this deepest wisdom that's inside of you. In fact, at some level, you already know everything I've been sharing with you, that there's this wisdom inside of each of us. It's what drew you here this morning. And so just take a moment 
I want you to invite in something that has been hard recently. Maybe it's a question that you can't find the answer to or a difficult relationship that you're not sure what to do with. Or just somewhere where you're wanting some guidance. And so bring this challenge to mind. And first, just noticing how it feels. It usually doesn't feel great when we call it to mind. That's okay. You know how to be with your emotions. So just let them rise and pass. And now I want you to invite in your wise self, your highest self. For some people, that's maybe an older version of yourself. For some people, sometimes it's just a wise being, like the Dalai Lama will come or Mother Teresa or maybe their puppy dog. It could really be anyone that just you trust. And so they come and they sit close by you. You can kind of just feel their energy and support. And just first, just take a moment to notice how it feels to have them close in. And if you're still not sure who's visiting you, whatever the first image or the first thought, that's, that's what your unconscious is giving you. So take it. We've had Gandalf before. We've had lots of different characters. But just imagine this light being sitting next to you, who's here to support you. And you take a moment, and you just kind of share with them what you're facing, what the difficulty is. And they really hear you, and they really see you, they understand. And now I want you to imagine that they lean over and they whisper in your ear some wise words. What do they say? What do they guide you? Listening deeply, feeling your breath. And then they take your hand and they place a small gift in your hand. So you open up your hand and you look at this gift and whatever's there, that's, that's what it is. Small gift to support you. See it clearly, hold it up to the light. And then you take a moment to thank them feel your gratitude, feel their support. And then they gently leave as you rest here with these words of wisdom and your gift, feeling your breath. And I want you just to lean your attention a little bit back and down and just feel yourself centered and grounded. Feel grateful for whoever came. As you're ready, you can slowly, gently let your eyes open. You can go ahead and just stretch your arms above your head or just move your body in any way that feels good. Okay, good job. Now I'm curious, I'll be curious what people noticed and especially what words of wisdom and gifts and people came. So powerful. I want you all to type into the chat box and look what we can do in just a couple of minutes. You know, the power of what, of how we can, I feel like I'm in a completely different energetic space after just a couple of minutes. I'd love to hear from you all in the chat box about what wisdom came to you. Take your time and about your gift, if you're willing to share. <clears throat> this is a safe, sacred space so we can all share here together. It'll be held in a lot of love. Uh, so Sean, I'll tell you what came to me. So I have been not struggling, but like really not interested in going back to exercising the way I was before the pandemic, like kicking my ass in the gym, like really hard lifting weights. And like, I just haven't, like I keep starting and then I stop and I start cause I'm just like not 
into it. But then I've been feeling judgment over my body because like my body mm-hmm. look, I don't, I don't feel mm, in my body the way that I did when I was working out that way. <clears throat> but I have, I, so I've been struggling with like, gosh, what do I do? Like, I can't, I don't have whatever that thing is in me anymore to like kill myself in the gym anymore. So what do I do? And the wise me just like whispered in my ear and was like, just do something fun that's active that you like. And and then it just goes, dance, just dance. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I, I like dancing, right? <laughs> and then I, but then I start, then it's interesting because right away my mind goes, where am I going to dance? I have to travel. Do I have to take online dance classes? What if I'm not that good at dancing? You know? And then I was just like, no, no, no. Da- just dance. And then <clears throat> the gift was like a little, it was so random. Just like in my hand was like a little, it looked like, it actually looked like the diamond emoji. <laughs> it was like the diamond emoji, but like right in my hand. And I just took it and put it in my hand. Anyway, I don't know if you have any reflections on that. And but. Well, first of all, I think it's so interesting how this wisdom can come to us, even though it's already inside of us, but it's like, we have to be able to shift perspectives and to ask and to like invite that in. And then I always tell people, whatever the gift was, you know, write that down, or if you can go get it or get an image of it, put it by your bed every single night as you like, let our unconscious start to guide us. I think so often we're so linear in our thinking and we're so kind of like pro con or oh, should I do this or should I do that? And we don't really access this deeper wisdom. Yeah. And, and so I love this. I love this practice because it really like lets the side of you that like, where, where did that come from? Right? Yeah. What is this diamond emoji? You don't know, but I promise you there'll be some understanding of it as you continue to pay attention. Yeah, I'm excited to see what that is. And I need to like, I'm going to like take a little note for myself right now so I don't forget when I get off the call just to like diamond emoji it up. <laughs> and so we have some other, I'm literally taking a note because I will forget. So there we go, diamonds. <laughs> and when you write something down and actually when you handwrite it, which is why I did the journal, you remember it 40% more. Okay, so it's really important to write things down. You think yeah. you might remember, but you won't. Sean, okay. I've taken so much, you know, wisdom from all the work that I've done with you because like this is the reason why when I teach on Zoom, I tell people type in the ones and type in quotes that you remember because mm. like it'll help you remember them as you type them down, you know, as we're going through and learning all these different things. And then other people will, oh shoot, I didn't even notice that, you know, and then they'll write it down. And so it's so powerful. So here, I want to I want to tell you some things people say. Their grandmother was there. Everyone, mm-hmm. first of all, is saying thank you. It was such an amazing practice. Um, <clears throat> Raylene says, Jesus told her to listen intently to her heart. Uh, mm-hmm. Cheryl had somebody holding her hand saying, let your family support you and give you the gift of love. Mm-hmm. Patient, Emily says. Ebru says, his brother's love. Tish says, my sister told me that I'm really a patient person. Kathy You are so very loved with a glass purple heart. Mm. This is beautiful. Keola says, oh, wow, my grandmother Eva and Dolly Parton showed up. And I (laughs) urge you to be kind, stay loving, and be forgiving. There's so many more here that I could read, but it's so powerful. It's so powerful. And I think what I want people to take from this is like in just a matter of minutes, you can rotate your consciousness and have access to this deeper wisdom, right? We didn't sit for a half an hour and I didn't light incense and candles and not that that's bad, but it's like right here. It's, it's right, you know, as close as the breath. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. And it, and if we can, which I love what you teach so much, if we can, the trick is taking that moment to recognize that we're in pain and instead of indulging, mm-hmm. show up with compassion right? And right. show up and, and do some of these practices and do the work. And so much of that work, we learn how to do it in such a clear way from you inside of your book and inside of this journal. Shauna, mm-hmm. is there anything else you want to make sure gets across to our community? Any big takeaways or teachings or lessons from the book that I that maybe other people do ask you that I didn't ask you? I want to make sure we have some time for that. Yeah. So, so one, one, I think really important thing that I want to emphasize, and I know we've talked about it, but I want to really have people understand is that 
neuroplasticity is one of the most hopeful messages we've ever had in science because what it means is that no matter what's happened to you, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter what your past, it's never too late to change. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to rewire your brain, literally. And, right, and it's not like flipping a switch where you instantaneously light up the good and shut off the bad. It takes practice. And so there is kind of a certain protocol to engaging neuroplasticity that after the age of 25, like zero to 25, you're just a sponge. You are learning. You can't help but learn. Something happens, you imprint it for the good and for the bad. Yeah. Once, once you're 25, I mean, not like on your birthday, but around 25, you, you, you actually start slowing down in your ability to learn and you have to actively engage neuroplasticity. It's not passive anymore. And so when people talk about it, they're like, yeah, neuroplasticity, I can change. Yes, that's true, but it's also important to know that it requires some practice and some work. And the first step, the most important step of engaging neuroplasticity is your intention. Mm. After age 25, you cannot change anyone else in a positive direction unless they volitionally want to change, unless they set their own intention. That's like radical new science that we've just only recently discovered. This is really, really important. And the same is true for yourself. So the first step for those of you that are like, what do I do? Is just setting the intention and feeling it in this like deep body sense way where this is important. This is what I care about. And if it's authentic and if it's real, as I said before, it will release dopamine. And all of a sudden the neurochemistry of change is in play. Wow. And how, you know, I want to ask you on the flip side of this, um, especially because I'm in New York right now getting ready to speak to a bunch of high school students. How does this mm. apply then when people are under 25? What's different about that? And the, I know obviously, that, you know, about the way that we think about the helping them change. Well, it's, I mean, you can absolutely use the same model. You, you want their intention and their attention focus. That's going to increase neuroplasticity. But the good news for them is they're going to learn. If they just practice this stuff, it's going to go in so much faster. And that's why, you know, I have to say, I want to kind of reorient my entire academic career to youth because here I am beating my head up, you know, against the wall. It's a little harder to change adults. It's still totally possible for all of us over 25. Yeah. But when they're younger, you can, I mean, imagine teaching self-compassion to someone who's four years old and for the rest of their life, they're like, oh, when I hurt myself, I put my hand on my heart. When I make a mistake, I say, sweetheart, let's try again. Imagine if that was your internal dialogue for your entire life. Yeah, it's a game changer. It's a total game changer. A lot of kids are learning this in schools now, and it's amazing to watch. There's a lot of parents yeah. here and a lot of like, I'm not a parent, but I'm an uncle to three three young girls. And my one of my nieces is at, you know, at five learning this in school. And it's so cool to watch her come home yeah. and use these tools and i think oh my gosh like and it's so easy for her she doesn't need all the all the convincing she's just like oh this is what we do you know and so anyway this is the power that we all have to step in and change the world and as we're all doing this work we then get to pass it down and pass it down and pass it down and every generation gets to be a little bit stronger yeah and i think what you just remind me and i'll, I'll end with this but we're never just practicing for ourselves either. No. I really want to make that clear that that everything we do ripples out. And so as we practice to really know that you're practicing both for yourself and everyone else in the world. And again, that builds that sense of interdependence and community and connection, which is really essential for, for healing. Yeah, this is so powerful. Oh, Dr. Shauna Shapiro. Thank you so much for being with us today. It is an absolute gift. I know everybody listening here, everybody listening to the recording has been beyond blessed. And I want to make sure that we do one of the practices that I learned from you that I do at the end of every single kingdom. And it's about, we call it, you call it your key takeaway and insight. We call it our golden nugget here at the kingdom. I, I actually call it a gold nugget. That's the, oh. it, that's the whole book. It's called the gold nugget. Great. That's, yes, that so was the cool. <laughs> yeah, so the golden nugget. So here we are with our gold nugget inside of our community. So why don't you're the one who I learned this from? So why don't you guide us into our golden nugget practice? Okay, so the the gold nugget practice is really just to take a moment and just as we did before, just kind of 
let your eyes close and let everything just settle in and just trust that you learned what you were supposed to learn, that you received what you needed. And then just invite in this kind of one gold nugget, this one key takeaway. It could be what you practice grows stronger. It could be the power of intention, the importance of kindness. Just for whatever reason, whatever speaks most to you. And I want you just to stay with it for about 20 seconds, it's two deep breaths. And as you stay with it, it helps encode it in your long-term memory so you can take it with you later. And on the next exhale, you can just let that go and just taking a moment of gratitude, gratitude for Justin for creating such extraordinary safe spaces for all of us, gratitude for each other on this journey together and really gratitude for these teachings. It's a blessing to even receive these teachings, to even be exposed to them. You know, for myself, I feel so grateful that they've really changed my life. So when you're ready, you can let your eyes open. Thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shapiro. Everybody, I want your golden nuggets in the chat box. Please type <laughs> all of your golden nuggets into the chat box. It will make it 40% more likely that you remember it. And... <laughs> show some love for Dr. Shauna Shapiro. We will have links to all of her books and all of this information inside of the chat box. Here again are the two books, Good Morning, I Love You, the original book, and also Good Morning, I Love You, the guided journal, which we've been talking about at length today. You can learn more about Dr. Shauna Shapiro at her website, which is very easy to remember, drshaunashapiro.com. Calm. And I'm bringing you back one more time, Shauna, just to say thank you so much for being with us today. We love you. Thank you. You're now a part of the Kingdom family. And uh, we rise together. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody. So as we say goodbye to Dr. Shapiro, I just want to close us out <clears throat> with a really important moment here as we talk about the power of clarity, calm, and joy. And we make sure that we each remember that we have the power in our lives to make the choice, to have the moment to make the choice. This is what we've been cultivating here together at The Kingdom. And I <clears throat> will close back with y'all. Have y'all seen my new guitar, by the way? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I love her, she's so shiny. So. Anyway, just a little moment of a reminder of where we started. Little boy, don't cry. You've been in pain. Enough. Come. Little girl, don't Finally say enough. I am enough. I am golden, baby. I am enough. I am enough. You are enough. Oh, you are golden, baby. You are enough. You are enough. When you show compassion, we are enough. <laughs> We are golden, baby, yeah. We are enough. We are enough. We are enough. Oh, we are golden, baby, yeah. We are enough. We are enough. No, we are enough. All right, Kingdom family. I love you all so much. It is a gift and an honor and a privilege to be here with you every other week. And we will be exploring all of this work in soul study together this Wednesday. If you haven't signed up, I'll make sure you have the link in the chat box. I love you. We are enough. Oh, we are golden, baby. We are enough. This is 
our moment. We are in the, this is our time. We are in the, oh, we are golden Asia. We are in the, we are in the, I love you, family. We rise together, and I'll see you right here in this special place next Tuesday. This whole session was a prayer. Ashe, Aho, Salam, Shalom, Amen, Satnam, Awen, Om. Thank you. I love you all. Bye for now. <laughs>